edition of The, the Naked, Naked Truth. Truth. My name is John Singletary. And I'm Ramon Rowan. Today we're going to talk about the Briggs versus Elliott case that was the uh, initial beginning of the Brown versus Board of Education that allowed, um, that went all the way to the Supreme Court and allowed us to have uh, public education where uh, it was void of discrimination and allowed African Americans to get a piece of the educational pie. Uh, today we'll talk about um, one of the influential figures who was Reverend Joseph Delaney, who had to flee South Carolina uh, and go up to New York. Um, of course, we know that the uh, forerunner to that case um, was uh, the one that was handled by the Howard University professor, um, I think it was um, Nesbitt. Mm -hmm. But um, at any rate, uh, he argued that uh, separate cannot be equal. Uh, at any rate, when we take a look at um, Reverend Delaney, when he was dead, buried, uh, dead, dead, not buried yet, he wanted to come back to South Carolina to his uh, homeland to be buried. And at that time, there was an open warrant for his arrest. Uh, the state did not rescind the warrant. And as a result, he had to, uh, the family had to stop with the body in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, and that's why his body is buried there rather than in South Carolina. Um, later, they had a ceremony with uh, the judge that was on that case, uh, Judge Waring. And during the ceremony in which I attended, uh, they gave very little mention to Reverend Delaney who was the catalyst for uh, even the Brown versus Board through Briggs versus Elliott? Um, I think that the um, what le reading this story and um, doing some research in the story just gives you an idea of the conditions of the judicial system here in South Carolina. Now, yes, they had, I agreed, um, John, yes, they had a warrant out for his arrest, but uh, I thought warrants would serve on live people. You know, this man was dead, and let me and let's let's talk about how he got a, a warrant on, for his arrest. And correct me if I'm wrong, John, that there was a a um, I guess a gang of white men with guns shooting at Mr. Um, Joseph Reverend Joseph Delaney. He shot back, defending himself. According to the Second Amendment, that was the the um, you have a right to defend yourself. Now he shot back, and he hit one of them. Make unless you're black. Huh? During those days in South Carolina, right? And you don't have the right to shoot. You don't have not yeah. And you know there was there was a point in time that they didn't want blacks to have guns. Oh, I know. In some parts of the country, they didn't want to have guns. Or if if you had the gun, like in Rosewood, certainly don't sell them the bullets. <laughs> yeah, <You're> right. <laughs> um, and so he shot back, and he struck one of them, and he knew that being in South Carolina, and you shot a white man, that he would have to flee and that's what he did he flee south carolina even though um he was defending himself and this should, should be a clear-cut black self-defense he case. was he left south carolina on a train up to head headed up north and um and they never rescinded the uh they never uh, rescinded the um the warrant out for his arrest and the man was clearly innocent but it's just typical of the kind of justice that a, uh, a person of color, and in this case a black man, receives in South Carolina. We, um, John and I, before we taped it, we t often talk about, the, we were talking about the, um, the Stinney case, the youngest um, person to ever be, be executed in the country right here in South Carolina. And so the justice that a black person receives in South Carolina is not justice at all. Oftentimes, you know, when we take a look at the Constitution and what is supposed to be guaranteed and protected in the Constitution, it, it only, it's only as good as the enforcement. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, here in South Carolina, oftentimes enforcement is, um, is void. I mean, it's just simply not there. Even today, we have uh, a case where um, there has been a conviction with absolutely... Excellent no example. Excellent trial example. whatsoever. The accuser, mm -hmm. the accused, has been denied the right to even come to court because they failed and refused to give him notice. 
you know, notice is uh, slightly less important than the right to a trial. Mm -hmm. And so things like that are still happening, and that's why we have to continue, uh, continually fight the civil rights uh, struggle. You have to. Um, when we first started um, our organization, it was called Judicial Freedom Riders, because we understood that um, um, uh, that a justice system is very important, and but we later um, evolved into Concerned Citizen Alliance. But when we look at our justice system as even even today, because the case that John is referring to was that was a case that's involving right now, but we're looking at you know nearly 60 years ago that Delaney he feared so much that he feared the justice system here in South Carolina that he fled, knowing that he was defending himself. He wasn't the aggressor; he was the defender, and you have a right to defend your home and defend your property, but in South Carolina. Um, your rights, uh, black man's rights, is um, what the judge, I believe, was judge, was it, which judge was it, Tanny? Judge Tanny. Judge Tanny. Judge Roger B. Tanny. Roger B. Tanny. That's black it. man's got no rights that a white man's got to respect. Yeah, and I am quite sure that many blacks believe that, and, and I am quite sure um, that Reverend Delaney uh, believed that, that a, that a black man has no rights. That a black that a white man has to obey, and therefore he fleed for his life. I believe he left his family here. Am I right? He did. Yeah, he had to leave his family here, and that was wrong. That was wrong. And then, what I find to be John just outrageous was he, he's now dead, and they was bringing him across the state line when uh, a group found out that they was bringing his body back because I believe he's from Summerton, am I right? Uh, right, in Summerton. No, in Summerton, there, yeah. Summerton, South Carolina. So they want to bury him where he was born. And they blocked him. Now the only, now John, I, I, you know more about the story than I do, um, but the only person that can deny you a right to come through come on to the state would be a state authority, such as a police officer. So who was it that denied that body to be placed back in South Carolina? It would have been the sheriff Carolina? in the county where the uh, warrant was issued. That's right. Who wouldn't rescind the order. Right. And that's a whole other story altogether that's quite interesting <laughs> why it uh, was not rescinded. Uh -huh. But um, the point is that there is a judicial system that has to be addressed because, like then, even here today, the enforcement of what is right is still not happening. Not happening. We have here in um, South Carolina a situation where if you have a case that is more likely to end in a uh, jury trial where you get fairness, they end it in pretrial adjudication mm -hmm. prior to you getting to court or uh, they allow it like the new court case. They mm -hmm. attempt to allow it to die on the vine. Yep, 16 um, years. By ignoring it. Right. Um, 16 years running. Yeah. Uh, that's a shame. That's a mockery of the judicial system, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But with Reverend Delaney, um, all around him, the people who were involved in the process, uh, not as committed to the change as he was, mm -hmm. uh, are now getting accolades. Mm -hmm. um, everybody is being uh, pushed as a civil rights fighter who was connected, even if they were connected, in a way that denied him his rights. And he's being left out of the picture totally. And it's, it's just dead wrong. Absolutely. I think that um, we just want to shed light on the truth of um, the plight of uh, uh, Brother Delaney. Uh, I, the, we needed to have, back in those days, we would have to consider to be um, Reverend Delaney to be a truth fighter. Oh, yes. Yeah, to the, uh, 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 and so we would not have um, where we're at right now today if it wasn't for um, Pastor or Reverend Delaney. We wouldn't be where we're at because of the fact that you know he decided, hey, I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight this injustice that we have. I believe he believed that we should, that he believed that we should have um, equal 
in our even in our education. Sure, I mean it, that started with a whole situation dealing with um, buses and um, right. the African American students not having a bus, and mm -hmm. finally they were given an old ragged our bus. Old ragged bus. Then it um, got to the point where they couldn't maintain it because of. Um, you know, it was just. I mean, they, this useful. They were talking about. They were saying that you know, well, y'all don't pay enough in taxes. Oh yeah, right. I know. They gave them old schools um, because separate but equal didn't work. Didn't wasn't you know wasn't applicable to if you're black. Mm -hmm. You separate legal so. And uh, you know, in conversations with uh, his daughter, um, she too believed that. Um, he is being uh, downplayed when it comes to the importance that he has been that he gave towards um, education as well as to the fight for civil rights. And um, so we just want to uplift um, that that family, um, the, the legacy that he left, the sacrifice that they made. Oh yes, sacrifice. And uh, many times as we as we prepare to close, but many times. Um, John, you and I personally know that um, that our sacrifice has to be made. Oh yeah, you know, when you fight for justice, it. it's going to be it's going to be made. Whether or not it's your finances, or whether or not even if it's your life, um, sacrifices are are required in fighting for uh, our struggle for justice and struggle for equality. Well, well this has uh, been another edition of the, the Naked, Naked Truth. Truth.